Doctor, send rival Congo troops into battle. <laughs> Naked. The current rebellion in the Congo's Kwailu province has its bizarre aspects. Diplomats just back from the combat zone report that both sides, rebels and government troops, are now going into action stark naked. The rebel warriors and the Congolese army soldiers reportedly can distinguish between each other because the government soldiers keep their steel helmets on. These doctors apparently are the core of the strange warfare. They reportedly persuaded the rebels that they would be political if they presented themselves to the god of war without clothes. But when some of the witch doctors fell into the hands of government troops. They were warned to produce a counter charm or else. As a result, the government troops were About 200 Congolese left wingers led by a key Davidson Barkley. They live on Chinese, Ghanaian, and Russian handouts and channel arms to the Kwailu rebels. Buckley's brief mandate in Stanleyville was notorious for its record of torture. And this seems to have helped his image as a man who does not compromise. As the 19th General Assembly prepared to open this week, the big two were on what appears to be a collision course 
over Moscow's unpaid UN bill of $52.6 million. The money is Russia's assessed share of the cost of maintaining UN peacekeeping forces in Suez and the Congo. Russia supported the original UN action, but later changed its mind. Despite the unanimous verdict of the International Court of Justice that the assessments are binding, the Kremlin has refused to pay its share. Washington threatens to demand the invocation of Article 19 of the UN Charter, which declares that any nation two years behind in its payment shall have no vote in the General Assembly. Washington has also threatened drastic reductions in its own contributions, currently 37% of the entire UN operating budget. Any punitive faction will force Moscow to face the necessity of reviewing its attitude toward the United Nations. After 20 years, he would be Prime Minister. I think that he had a sick imagination. At least at that time, I already considered him to be not quite normal. Not always, but at times. Monsieur de Gaulle was a calm, goes for oh. three years and remains its leading march. The symbols of the march of whites out in the name to of socialism. Don't tell strong. His liver and kidneys eaten raw by a laughing rebel officer. While the mayor Wear the belt. 
hearts of Belgians and Americans. Carlson is not singled out. We will dress in the skins of Belgians and Americans. Cayuga! Cayuga! I wasn't running properly, and I fell down twice. My legs wouldn't function right. Joseph As Tunko Belgians, we will was wear the hearts of Belgians and Americans. We will they dress the skins of Americans and Belgians. With the beer bottle and blinded him. They're worth more than 1,500 pounds of gold. Valued at nearly $800,000. And worth $6 million. Belgians the price of the Congo. In the skins of Belgians. 45 minutes to die. Immediately, I could see on my clothes, my clothing. I could see on the interior of the car, which is our car, was a pale blue. Brain tissue, which I immediately recognized and I recall very well. On my trousers, there was a chunk of brain tissue, as big almost as my thumb. And again, I did not see the president at any time, either after the first, second, or the third shots. But I assumed always that it was he who was hit, and no one else. When Connolly's wife, Nellie, heard the first shot, she turned around to see Kennedy. He made no utterance, no cry. I saw no blood, no anything. It was just sort of nothing, the expression on his face, and he just sort of slumped down. In Cairo, some 200 African and Egyptian students descended on the U.S. Embassy and burned down the adjacent $250,000 John F. Kennedy Memorial Library. However, the State Department is giving favorable consideration to a request from the United Arab Republic for an additional total of $35 million in surplus foods to ease serious food shortages in that country. From the end of World War II through the last fiscal year, the United States has supplied $947 million in economic and technical assistance to the Egyptians. While annoyed at some of the recent actions of the Nasser government, and despite the trend in the Cairo press to see international issues virtually through communist eyes, officials expect that the request will be granted. The present attitude is to continue aiding President Nasser on the ground that past policy despite some annoying episodes, has been reasonably successful. Egyptian authorities are pressing for a decision before January 1st, since recent congressional changes in the program provide for increased shipping charges after December 31st. Soviet editor. Says Yale professor. Seeks to revive.